Rootworm insecticides. Farmers are talking about these things like they haven't been in the last 10 years probably since BT rootworm corn first came out. But there is a lot of talk because the BT rootworm traits are not working as good as they are expected to work. Well, just be careful about that when you say the traits aren't working because some of them are. Like Smart Stacks, for example, that stacks two different rootworm traits is working great. Well, it's the single, single trait <laughs> products that are having some issues yeah. with rootworm resistance. So that's where we're looking at the, the major focus of insecticide uses on those acres. But also some guys are saying, well, wait a minute now, these bugs have to take a bite out of my root to get that BT protein. I think I might even want to protect the Smart Stacks corn. Right. That's what we're doing on our farm. We have been ever since we started planting Smart Stacks a couple, three years ago. Anyway, what we wanted to focus on today is what are the different insecticide choices out there? Which one should you use in your operation? And what are the different application methods? So let's start with application methods. How are we gonna put this on? Okay, well, there's a few different ways. First of all, if you have dry granular insecticide and you actually have those boxes still on your planter, congratulations, you're one of the minority right now. Uh, there aren't but as many farmers- that's the best way to go. Yeah, there aren't as many farmers that have that. Back in the old days, hey, everybody had that and it was easy, but now there aren't as many. And yeah, it is the best way to apply your insecticide. You've got some good choices like Force and Aztec are probably the best ones. Lors Band's still not too bad a choice. Uh, but the problem with that and the downside is you have to actually dump those bags into your boxes and that leaves some exposure risk for you. Well, not necessarily because you could get smart boxes. That's a pretty good way to go. It's not only Fortress or it's not only Force or Aztec or whatever. There's quite a few different ones and that's a good thing for you because now you've got some flexibility there as to what you're going to use. Okay, but in terms of the application methods, we're going to talk about in furrow, band, and T-band. So in furrow is putting all that insecticide right down basically with the seed. You can certainly do that, but now your insecticide is in a concentrated small area. And don't forget that the roots on the corn plant, the, the primary roots, the nodal roots, they're gonna come out above where the seed is planted. So now you've literally got your insecticide too deep. That's why we prefer a band or a T-band in a lot of cases. Now, many farmers don't like the band, and I can't blame them because by banding, that leaves some of the insecticide on top of the soil. We probably don't really want to do that. Well, and then you end up with a year like 2012 where it's an extreme drought, and you know what? Some right. of those granules just didn't get enough moisture to, to break down and get down into the soil. So T-band is probably our preferred method in a lot of cases where some of the stuff drops in the furrow and the rest of the stuff is on top of the ground, but then the closing wheels come along and kind of push that stuff together, get a little bit of dirt on it. That's the safest way to go. And like we say, probably the best. Now you have some down in furrow for protection against things like wire worms and white grubs. And then you also have some up where the nodal roots are gonna be for better protection for rootworms. Okay, now we talked about if you have dry boxes on your planter or if you have smart boxes, those are good ways to put insecticide on. But what about the liquid? Well, there are many guys that are still using Capture LFR. That's the liquid fertilizer ready version of Capture that can mix right with your starter or your pop-up type fertilizer application. So you can put a liquid insecticide on. Now, there used to be more choices in the liquid market right now. Uh, Capture is pretty much the only choice in the liquid market. So if you're interested in using a liquid system, it's a lot less expensive to get set up that way. Uh, and you may be set up for it already if you're already putting on some liquid fertilizer. Now, the nice thing about the liquid program is it's simple, it's easy, it doesn't cost a lot of money to get into the program. And if you have great big boxes on your planter for seed, you don't have to go back to smaller boxes and put a smart box system on or just a regular uh, box for insecticide on, you can use that liquid product. But we'll just be upfront with you, the liquid product is probably in a lot of cases not quite as good as some of the dry products like Force well, or Well, hold on now. I guess you look at this and we're putting on insecticide, you know, on our farm starting in the middle of April and we're expecting that to hold us, you know, for a couple of months at least. Yeah, we, we should explain real quick in our area, for example, in southern South Dakota, we're gonna have corn hopefully planted in April. It'll be the middle of April to the end of April. And a lot of these rootworms are not gonna hatch until we get to the end of May, maybe even the first week of June. Then they're gonna feed for about a month. So that's the kind of time we're, we're looking at protecting. We want protection in June with a treatment we're gonna put on in April. And so I agree with you, Darren, it's not really fair to some of these products to say, well, you have to last out here for two to three months. So, so we get a lot of people that ask, well, wait a minute, can I just spray something on foliar or post-emerge and try work. and soak some of that in? Yeah, it just doesn't work. So we used to use Furidan as a rescue treatment. 
uh, back years ago, but Furidan's off the market today. Your next best option would be Liquid Lorsban. If you want to do that, use the very highest labeled rate and pray for about a three inch rain immediately afterwards. And, and even then, expect 50% control at best. Plus, don't mix it with anything else, otherwise it gets kind of hot and could burn your crop. Yeah, and don't forget, if you're out there, let's say the end of June in our area, well, now you're just talking about a revenge kill. All the damage has been done. The, the bugs are just about to convert to adults. So what good did you do? You didn't save any yield. Yeah, you killed a few bugs, but so what? The point is you've got to kill those bugs before they're feeding. You've got to get them under control right when they're hatching in May or very early June. Okay, let's talk about that now. When they become adults and they start popping out of the ground, you can still control them at that stage. When you see those adult beetles, is oftentimes right around when your corn is silking and you'll see them feeding on those ends of the, the silks and clipping some silks off from your ear. That's a good time to go out with a foliar insecticide. And actually it's pretty easy and cheap to kill them. You can use a low end rate of a pyrethroid or if you're out spraying for corn leaf aphids or something else, uh, you can wipe out those corn rootworm adults at the same time. Okay, so once again, what we're talking about here is using a bunch of different insecticides to get rootworm control. We do encourage you to rotate your mode of action. So if you're gonna use a pyrethroid like Force one year, use an organophosphate like Aztec. Aztec's about 95% organophosphate. Switch to that the next year, something like that. Uh, we have talked in the past about insecticide and herbicide interaction. We have the most problem with counter because that's systemic. If you wanna use that, that's fine. Counter is a pretty good insecticide and it's the very best on nematodes that we've got. And this is a big topic. A lot of farmers now are realizing, ooh man, if I'm gonna plant corn, I've gotta have insecticide out there, especially with the price of corn where it is today. So if you're considering this on your farm, I just want you to think again about how you're gonna put that insecticide on, the application method that you're gonna use, band, T-band, or in-furrow, and talk to your agronomist a little bit about the best for your area and your farm. I just wish, Brian, we could get corn rootworms to feed on our weed of the week instead of our corn, because <laughs> our weed of the week is tough to control. Can you identify this week's weed? 